Okay, today in this section we're going to be talking about multiplying and dividing uh, real numbers. And in the last section we covered addition and subtraction. This time we're going to cover multiplication and division. And I have to say that multiplication and division is actually a little bit easier as far as the signs go. I'm going to write a few things, uh, quick things down up at the top of the board that we'll be using for the rest of the, the lesson. And they'll help us as we go along. Uh, these are rules similar to the uh, to the rules on how to figure out what the uh, the sign of the answer is going to be like like it was there for the addition and subtraction. So for multiplication division, it's actually pretty easy. If you're multiplying or dividing a positive number with a positive number, answer is always going to give you a positive number. This is uh, you know from from third grade. Three times three is nine. Two times six is twelve. Things like that. Ten divided by five is, is uh, two, and those are all positive numbers. Um, if you're taking a negative number and multiplying it by another negative number or dividing it by neg another negative number, the answer is always going to give you a positive number. That may seem odd at first, but um, when you really think about it, you take uh, a negative two pencils, which means I don't even have two pencils. I have a negative two pencils. I owe you two pencils. And then I multiply it a negative number of times, and it's sort of like the negatives cancel out, and you end up with a positive number. Um, uh, it's just something you're going to have to memorize, but that's, that's the way it works. And the final combination here is actually easier than the remembering the addition rules. If you're taking a negative number multiplying by a positive number, um, you will always get a negative number. Um, so negative 2 times 3 is going to give you a negative 6. A negative 5 times 2 is going to give you a negative 10. And of course because um, addition is, uh, uh, you know, the backwards is, is the same, like 3 times 2 is 6 and, and uh, uh, 2 times 3 is 6, um, the reverse is also true. If you're taking a positive number multiplying by a negative number, you're again always going to get a negative number. These are exact, uh, exactly equivalent because of the way multiplication works. So I'm going to write that down as something we're going to kind of keep for the rest of these lessons and it's going to help us as we go. Let's just dive right on into it. Positive 6 times positive 8. Now this is kindergarten math here. I mean I've just put these positive numbers here um, you know to make sure that you're aware that they're positive but you know you don't have to put these positives here. 6 times 8 you know that's that's the same thing as positive 6 times positive 8 and that's simply equal to positive 48 which you know in any other class you know is just equal to 48. I'm just putting the sign there to be clear. Um, again positive times positive is positive so we just follow the rule up there. Let's take another example. Negative 8 times negative 7 Negative times a negative always gives me a positive. Um, and 8 times 7, last time I checked, was 56. So that's the answer. Now notice when I'm writing these parentheses here, I'm not explicitly putting the multiplication symbol in there, which is typically like a dot. And that's just something you're going to have to get used to in algebra, um, seeing things written a little bit differently each time. But the, the multiplication is kind of implied when you don't have anything in the middle there. You're multiplying them together. You'll see that a lot. It'll become clear as we go. Uh, just another one. Um, positive 9 times positive 7. Positive times positive is positive. You get a positive 63. And here's one slightly different. Negative 7 times 7, which is just positive 7. Negative times a positive is a negative, so you'll always end up with a negative 49 there. Um, and then just one more example here of this type. Positive 12 times negative 12. Positive times a negative is a negative, and 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, so that's, that's some simple examples of multiplication there. Um, so you see it's really not too bad. All you need to do is, um, uh, you know, keep the rules kind of straight in your head. And, um, you know, you can make yourself a little cheat sheet. And before you know it, you know, within a, f a little bit of time working problem after problem after problem after problem, you'll just, you'll basically memorize it. It's really not that difficult. Positive times positive gives you a positive. Negative times negative also gives you a positive. The only time basically you get a negative out of it is if you have 
two, you know, one of each there. Okay, so let's just take a few different examples. Uh, let's deal with a fraction here. Negative three-fourths times negative eight over three, eight-thirds. What's that going to equal? Well, negative times negative is positive. And the way we multiply fractions we learned before is we multiply the top and we multiply the bottom. So 8 times 3 is 24 over 4 times 3 is 12. And we can immediately reduce this because 24 divided by 12 is just equal to 2. So 2 is the answer to that guy. Now let's say we have a negative 3 times a negative 1 third okay remember we said any whole number is just that equal to that over one so this is negative three over one times negative one over three and I have something the same number on the top so I can you know that kinda goes away and then I have the same number here so I can strike out the three and put a one there strike out the three and put a one there because three divided by three is one and three divided by three is one so I've got negative times negative is equal to positive one times one is one over one times one is one and one over one is simply equal to one so that's the answer now you want to be real clear about how you write this down here I'm, I'm doing it for you because I'm the one writing the problem but when you yourself are doing this stuff you need to make sure that it's clear you see the parentheses tell me clearly I'm multiplying these together if I didn't write the parentheses I would have something like negative three something like this and maybe you might try to put some kind of multiplication in there. That that just isn't very clear because it looks like you're taking negative three and subtracting one third. Um, so you have to be real clear, and that's what the the parentheses is, is is really you know useful for in this case to keep keep it straight for us, uh, which is good. Okay, let's take uh, a, a three numbers. Let's say we have three times negative four times negative six. Well that's really not too bad we just go in order we'll just work with these two and then we'll work with these two negative times positive is a negative three times four is twelve and then we just that's times negative six so we just kinda we know that this is equal to negative twelve and we just continue multiplying that by the negative six now negative times negative is a positive and twelve times six is 72. So that's the answer. Just kind of work with it uh, one step at a time there. So this stuff's actually kind of fun. Multiplication and division in, in many ways are actually in algebra a little bit easier than addition and subtraction. Remember in addition and subtraction we had to figure out to figure out, you know, if you're adding a, a negative number to a positive num number, you, you need to figure out which of the numbers is bigger to figure out what the sign of the answer is going to be. In this case, you just got some straight rules, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, let's continue. Let's do a couple more here, these uh, numerical type problems, and we'll move on. Let's say we have negative 2 times 3 times 4. Well, let's see. 2 times 3 is 6. It's a negative times a positive, so it's negative 6. And we'll just carry through the multiplication times 4. 6 times 4 is 24, and it's negative times positive, so it's negative 24. And that's the answer there. Uh, what if we had 2 times negative 5 times negative 6? times negative 7. Again, we just carried on through. This time I'm going to break it up slightly differently just for a little variety. Okay, 2 times negative 5 is a negative 10 because 2 times 5 is 10 and it's a negative times a positive. And then the 6 times 7 here separately, 6 times 7 is 42 and negative times negative is positive so that's positive 42. Now remember these two things are multiplied together because we haven't done this multiplication here. Negative 10 times positive 42. So I'm going to put a big fat equal sign here because the entire thing is equal to negative 420. And that's simply because negative times positive gives you negative and 10 times 42 is 420. So it's really not too bad. Alright, so those are the basics of 
of how you multiply. Notice that we haven't done any explicit division here uh, yet. Um, you know, we'll do some in a, in a few problems. We'll have a few different kinds of multiplication problems, but um, really, it's not too necessary to, to do it honestly because m division is multiplication. Um, and when you when you really think about it, um, anytime I divide, like if I have three fourths, well, that's division, right? Um, this is really the same thing as three times one fourth. Kind of makes sense, right? Because three is really three over one. So when you multiply this out, 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4. So division, the, the process of dividing th uh, 4 into 3, is really the multiplication of the number 3 times a fraction, which is 1 fourth. So all of these rules that we're developing for multiplication are exactly the same thing for division. Um, you follow the same rules for the sign, and then you know, instead of multiplying to get the actual number in the answer, you just divide. It's really, it's really not too bad at all. Okay, for the next set of problems, we're going to do some what I like to call plug and chug uh, to exercise that. We're going to say x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to negative 3. And we're going to keep this through all the problems that follow. Okay, so let's just do a few here. y squared is an expression is equal to y times y. In this case, y is equal to 2, so 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2. Positive times positive gives me a positive 4. Okay? Let's say I have something looks like this, negative z squared. z is equal to negative 3. Now this can be tricky, you need to think about this. Um, for a minute and just and just realize what you're doing. You need to take it one step at a time. This is equal to negative z squared. You always do the square first. So you write it as a negative and I'm going to put a parenthesis here and put a negative 3 in the middle and then I'm going to put my square outside. Uh, you need to read it that way. Then it's it's you keep that negative out there separately and you're squaring z. z is negative 3 so I write it like that. For instance, if you could go uh, haywire if you started to do something like this. If you started to treat it as negative z to the third, that is different uh, than, than negative z correction, not negative z to the third, negative z squared. These two things are completely different um, because in this case I'm squaring z and then adding a negative sign there at the end. In this case I'm trying to apply a negative sign first and squaring it. All I'm trying to say is uh, when you're given the problem make sure that you, you do it in the proper order because the answer will be dependent on it. Uh, and we'll see that here. Um, negative 3 squared is simply negative 3 times negative 3. So let's write that. I'm going to keep this negative out front and I'm going to say I have a negative 3 times negative 3. That is what's inside here as negative 3 squared. Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 because negative times negative is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. And I have a leftover negative sign out here, which is kind of like negative 1 times whatever's in the middle. So the actual answer here, put an equal sign there, is negative 9 because this last negative makes, it, uh, makes this 9 here negative. Okay. Let's say you have something like xy, which is x times y, is equal to x, which is negative 1, times y, which is 2. Negative times positive is negative. 1 times 2 is 2. So you get a negative 2 there. Um, you just need to be real methodical, and, and, and that's why we're doing a lot of problems, because um, the only way you get good at this stuff is, is by problems. I remember when I learned algebra, I, I went through the book and just did as many problems as possible. And, and um, you know, after a while, it's kind of like watching sports. You know what to expect. You know, you know what, what the punchline is going to be. It's kind of like telling a joke. You know what the punchline is going to be. By the time you get there, you've just done too, so many other things. Um, all right, let's take something slightly bigger. Let's say x plus y times z, this quantity x plus y times z. Okay, let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. x is negative 1 plus y, which is 2, 
times z, which is on the outside, and z is a negative 3. Now, if I just wrote negative 3 out here like that, that would be very confusing because it would look like I was taking this and then subtracting 3. But I really mean to multiply by a negative 3, so I'm going to put parentheses around here, and that tells me that I'm actually performing a multiplication there. It's very important. So let's work with the parentheses first. That's what we always do with these things. Um, negative 1 plus 2. Uh, well, the bigger number is positive, so the answer is going to be positive. And then I want to subtract these, so 2 minus 1 is 1. The answer is positive 1 in here. Um, so this is 1 times negative 3. Um, positive times negative is a negative. Uh, and 1 times 3 is 3, so I'm going to have a negative 3 here for this answer. And that is the answer. Um, let's go ahead and say x, y plus y z. Okay, x is negative 1, y is 2, plus y is 2, z is negative 3. So let's work with this one first. Uh, negative times positive is negative, 1 times 2 is 2. Negative times positive is negative, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. Uh, so what I'm really left with here, I'm going to go ahead and, and erase this up here to finish the problem to make it clear what I'm doing. I'm continuing this problem up here now. Um, I'm really left with negative 2 plus a negative 6, which is kind of what I have written there. Um, and in this case, the answer here is going to be negative 8 because I'm adding a negative and a negative, I'm going to get a negative, and I just add the numbers here, it gives me a negative 8. And you can look back over the addition rules um, uh, a couple lessons ago, or the last lesson, if you've forgotten those rules. And I may be running, you know, a little fast through some of these examples, um, but if you, you know, want to go and play it back or rewind it, and that's the good thing about these tapes, you can go ahead and just play it back, pause it, work the problem, see what the answer is. Okay, let's say we have something that looks like y squared z squared. Okay, that's equal to y is 2, so I've got 2 squared. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses just to be clear what I'm doing. z, which is negative 3, is also squared. Okay, 2 squared is 4. That's just 2 times 2. And minus 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3. Negative times negative gives me a positive. 3 times 3 is 9, so I've got a positive 9. And then 9 times 4 is 36, positive 36. And that is the answer there. Let's say I've got y times x minus y squared. Okay. y is 2. Inside the parentheses, I've got minus 1, which is x, minus y which is 2 and all this stuff is going to be squared so what's inside here minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 because I'm basically adding two negative numbers so the answer is going to be negative and then since I'm adding two negative numbers I just add the numbers and that gives me a, a positive uh, I mean a negative 3 so it's going to look like 2 times negative 3 squared and that's going to equal 2 times negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9 again, just like the problem before. And 9 times 2 is 18. So the answer to that problem is 18. Okay. So we're just going to work a couple more of these, this kind of problem, and then we're going to actually get to some division problems, which I've already mentioned is pretty much the same thing as multiplication, but I um, figured, heck, why don't we just get a little practice doing it? It doesn't take too long, not too bad, but just to show you that they're pretty much the same thing, we can go ahead and try to do some. Okay, let's say we have, to finish up with this type of problem, we'll just do one more, x squared times y minus z. That's equal to x, which is negative 1, squared times y, which is 2, minus z, which is negative 3. 
well, right away, when you minus a negative, I can immediately put plus and a plus. So this is really like 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is simply 5. So what I'm left with here is negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1. Negative times negative gives me a positive. 1 times 1 is 1 times 5. 1 times 5 is positive 5. All right. That's pretty much all there is to do with that. Now let's go ahead and do some um, simplifying of, of fractions with this stuff. What if I have 80 over negative 20? Uh, remember, the, the rules are the same. If you uh, divide a positive by a negative, you're always going to get a negative number. Same as multiplying a positive by a negative. So I can automatically put a negative out here. Uh, next thing to do is realize I can simplify this fraction because 20 will go into the bottom and 20 will go into the top evenly. 20 divided by 20 is 1. 80 divided by 20 is 4 because 4 times 20 is 80. So I'm left with negative 4 over 1 which is simply negative 4. Let's say I have negative 160 over 40. Again, negative divided by a positive is going to give me a negative. 40 divided by 40 is 1. 160 divided by 40 is 4. The answer again is negative 4. And we'll just do one more problem over here of this type. Let's say I've got 8 minus 12 all over negative 2. Well, we need to figure out what's going on here in the top before I can do any of this division. We need to do this addition first to put the top because you can kind of imagine a imaginary parentheses around these two things. You've got to figure out how to do the top first before you do this division. Um, okay, so 8 minus 12. What is 8 minus 12? That's going to be negative 4. The reason is negative 12 is the bigger number, so the answer is negative. And since I'm doing a subtraction here, I just need to subtract the absolute value. So 12 minus 8 is 4, so negative 4 over, I carry down the negative 2. Now again, negative divided by negative gives me a positive, so the answer is positive. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that is the answer to that. So let me go ahead and just erase one little time here, last, reclaim a little bit of the board, and then we'll do some problems that are different still. And that will be different. And they will be they will be different and they will be good. Now we're also going to plug and check with these problems. These will be involving some division here just to kind of illustrate the fact that they are pretty much the same. Now let's say x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 3, z is equal to 4, t is equal to 5, and w is equal to minus 18. So that's a lot of stuff. So let's we'll go ahead and put that up at the top, put a line so we don't erase it. And we'll just move on. I'm only going to do a few of these, but they'll be they'll be nice to do. Let's say we have yz divided by x. Y is 3. Z is 4. X is negative 2. Well, let's go ahead and deal with the top first. 3 times 4 is 12 divided by negative 2. Positive divided by negative gives me a negative. 12 divided by 2 is simply 6. So that's the answer. Not too bad. Let's say we have z plus w over x. z is 4. w is minus 18, so I've got a plus negative 18. X is negative 2. Again, 
We've got to deal with the top because it's like there's an imaginary parentheses around this plus on the top before we can do our division. In this case, negative is bigger. Negative 18 is a bigger absolute value wise than 4, so this top is going to be negative. And since I'm I'm basically doing a subtraction here. I've got mixed signs. I'm going to subtract the absolute value of negative 18 minus 4. So 18 minus 4 is 14. And I put, I've already got my negative sign, so the answer to the top here is negative 14 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative gives me a positive, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. So that's pretty much that. That is pretty much that. Okay, let's go ahead and do three more of these problems. Let's say I have t times w over y. t is 5, w is minus 18. Notice I put it in parentheses so there's no confusion. I'm, I'm obvious that I'm multiplying here. Divided by y is 3. Okay, now this is interesting. I could take 5 times negative 18, get an answer, and then divide by 3 and try to simplify. However, I know that 3 goes into 18 an even number of times, so I'm going to simplify this. There's no addition in here. This is multiplication, so I can go ahead and simplify just like a fraction. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, uh, and 18 divided by 3 is 6, and you've got a negative sign, so this is really a negative 6. So really what you're left with is 5 times negative 6 and this is uh, 5 times 6 is 30 and it's negative times positive so it's negative 30 that's the answer there and it would have worked exactly just fine if I had to multiply the top and divide it by the bottom and it, it would have simplified to to negative 30 I guarantee you could go try that if you like let's say we have x t z over y plus 1 x is negative 2, t is 5, z is 4, all over y is 3 plus 1, which is going to just equal 4. But we'll uh, actually we could just we could put a little mini equal sign and say this is going to equal 4 on the bottom because we can we know this 3 plus 1 is 4, and since 4 is isn't common in the top and in the bottom once we do this. I can just put a big fat line through all of this and a big fat line through all of that. They're going to cancel out. So I don't even need to deal with them any more, anymore. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative times positive is a negative. So the answer is negative 10. So you see, there's lots of little things. Now, I didn't have to do that. I could have done this. Um, you know, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 times 4 is negative 40. But then negative 40 divided by 4 is going to give me negative 10. So if I would have done it the quote unquote longer way, uh, would have been just fine. Um, so if you don't see how to simplify things right away, that's cool. There's no big deal. It's just uh, latitude in that. And you're going to be frustrated eventually as you study this stuff more because in the book, eventually you will come across some proof or some problem that, that uh, simplifies the thing in a way that you never would have thought and it will eventually upset you. But um, you're going to have to get used to that. There's been people working algebra problems a lot longer than you or I have been alive. So there's lots of tricks out there, and you'll learn them all. I guess that's my point. Final problem, wz minus xy over x plus y equals w is negative 18 times z, which is 4, minus x, which is negative 2 times y which is 3 over x which is negative 2 plus y which is 3 um, hmm let's see here 18 times 4 on the top okay well let's go ahead and simplify this we can see that this is going to be 18 times 4 like this minus 2 times 3 is 6 negative times positive 
is negative. So I can put negative 6 here, uh, and then I can put my fraction bar. Negative 2 plus 3 is simply 1, because positive is bigger, so it's going to be positive, and I'm doing a subtraction, so 3 times 2 is, is 3 minus 2 is 1, rather. And because I've got a minus a negative here, I can uh, go ahead and do this. And when you multiply this out, 18 times 4, and then you add the 6 on there, you're going to end up with negative 66. And you can verify that. So that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, addition and subtraction uh, and multiplication and division. It's not that hard. There are a few simple rules to follow. Um, but in the end, it's really not that terribly difficult, and it's pervasive through all of algebra. It's very important, so I'd advise to study this and, and practice as many problems as you can. And that's all for this lesson.